On today's episode, we're going to look at how Gigapixel AI, the new update, handles fur and feathers. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, it's going to be Topaz Gigapixel AI. I appreciate all your comments and questions that you guys have been giving me. I love to read them. I love to answer them. And uh, the other thing, it gives me ideas for new shows. And somebody made a comment saying, I'd like to see a show on how it handles fur and feathers. Okay, so I thought today I would do that. Now, I have three images today. These are all JPEG images. You can download them. I'll leave a link in the uh, description below so you can download these and try it for yourself. I have this bird. I have a cat. And I have a big cat. Okay, so we have these three images, and we're going to see how it handles fur and feathers. Here we are in Gigapixel AI. I already have my images loaded. To load them, you just come up here to File and click Open Images. Now, remember, Gigapixel is a batch processor, so you can load up a bunch of images at once and batch them all out. And now the Gigapixel is super fast. I'm really excited. So the batch processing will go a lot quicker now. Now, if you want to process it, process your images differently. In other words, you may want to use the standard model on this image, another image, the very compressed model. So if you're using different models, you're going to definitely want to have select all unchecked because when select all is checked, that means that they're all going to get the same processing. So that's very important. So if you plan on using different AI models on different images, uncheck that select all. Let me go back to the bird. Believe it or not, the preview screen is your buddy when you're working with Gigapixel AI, okay? And the reason I'm saying that is you need to be a detective and scan around your image. You need to try different models out and see which one's working the best for you. Now that uh, Gigapixel is lightning fast, it's easy to go around and examine your image. If you would happen to uh, pick a model based on a certain part of the image, like the bird right here, if you don't scan around, there may be some artifacting other in other parts of the image that you didn't know about. So it's very important after you pick a model, and I haven't yet. I'm on art and CG. But when you move around, if you don't pick the right model, you may see some artifacts. Okay, so it's very important to really closely examine. Because, you know, you may say, Gigapixel sucks. Look at that artifact. Well, Gigapixel doesn't suck. You just picked the wrong uh, AI model, and that's very important. If you don't get the right model, you could have artifacts, so bear that in mind. You have two different ways of viewing your image with Gigapixel, and if you come up here to view, you'll see those. Uh, you have the single view or the side-by-side -side view. Now, I recommend the side-by-side -side view, so you can really compare the left to the right. The left would be the original, the right would be the upsized, so you can see if you're moving in the right direction. Now, right now, I'm using the wrong model here, uh, Art and CG, and we're gonna go through all these models, but I just wanna show you something here. Let me uh, see the hand tool. This is here by default. You just left-click with your mouse, and you can drag this around and move it to different parts of the image, but I wanna show you something. They're actually, on this particular JPEG image you see right here, that's an artifact, I believe, in the image right there, okay? But you can see here, Gigapixel kind of got rid of it, but I'm in the art and CG model right now, but you see that line right there? That doesn't look right. And this is what I mean when you say, man, look, it gave me an artifact. It sucks. No, it doesn't. Watch this. Watch when I go to standard. I still see it. Right, it looks just like that one. Now let me go to um, say uh, art and CG. Is that what I was just in? Yeah, I think it was just in art and CG. Let's go to low resolution. Look in low resolution, it totally got rid of it. Let's try very compressed. This is what I mean by trying different things. See what the different models look like and then scan around and make sure you're happy with everything. Like right here, I. This looks pretty good. I mean, look over, compare it to the image on the left. It uh, Gigapixel brought some extra detail out in here in this very compressed mode. Now, this is a very low-res image, as you can see. It's a 1920 by 1279 JPEG image. But I think that's a little overdone. And also, I always, I always like to keep my settings in the auto setting. Kind of important. I like to start there. So there, it looks a little bit better. Let me go ahead and go to low resolution. See in low resolution, that looks really nice. And my artifact is is gone as well. There's a light hint of it, but Gigapixel just kind of blended that out into the background. So that's really nice. And let's come over the bird and see how it handled the feathers. 
doing a really good job. So remember, this is about fur and feathers today. So that does a nice job. Now let's click it on standard. I recall in the tooltips that it said in the standard model that fur and feathers could give you artifacting. Uh, to turn on the uh, tooltip system, come up to the menu and click on preferences. And then uh, just uh, uncheck uh, disable tooltips and you'll see your tooltips. And if you hover over these models, it tells you what these different models do, right? But if you notice, when I hover over standard, it says best choice across a variety of images. Works well for all photography, but can cause artifacts with fur and feathers. And that's another reason for the video today. Which model works best with fur and feathers? And I'll be honest with you, with my testing, I find different models work differently. So, you know, you got to try them all because you'll find, you know what, art and CG works great for this image, but low resolution work great for this other other image so you want to be a detective and you want to try out all the different models and you also want to scan around it really doesn't take long to do now that uh, gigapixel is super fast so don't worry about that but you want to get it right i don't see any artifacting here but i do recall when i was over in this section now you could also come up to the preview here and you could drag here and move around too but you remember there was like an artifact right here it could be a spider web but it looks like an artifact to me but you see right there, that's standard. But I recall in the low resolution, it pretty much got rid of it. Okay. And disable to disable your tooltips, you could go back up to the menu or you can come right here and say, disable these tooltips. But again, try all the different models and move around and be an examiner, an inspector, a detective, you know, and make sure it's doing a great job. But it's doing a great job in the fur and feathers. I like it. And uh, so this one's going to be low resolution. Now, remember, we want to unselect all here because right now it's selected. And I want to uncheck it because I want to do each one of these uh, images individually. So now let's go on to our next image. This beautiful little kitty cat. I love cats. And this little kitty definitely has fur. He doesn't have feathers, but he has fur. Now, here's another thing. I always like to leave my auto update preview checked on. I used to leave it off in the past because Gigapixel was kind of slow, but now it's really fast. So I leave that turned on. So again, I'm being a detective and I'm moving around my image. So I'm going to start out with, here's the way I work. I'll start out with standard in the side-by-side -side view and come to part of the image where I can really see a lot of the fur details. Again, I start out with standard and then I progress through the different AI models and try to find the one that looks the best. And I have auto set on here. And then if I need to tweak it, I can adjust things here if I need to remove more noise or make it a little bit sharper, whatever I need. But let's try lines. I know it's not buildings and things like that, but let's see what lines do because there's fur is kind of has a linear shape to it, right? And it accents some of the lines, but it's really overkill. So that doesn't look good. Let's try Art and CG. And I'm surprised sometimes Art and CG is the right model. Now, Art and CG is pretty nice. Let's come to this section of the ear. So you can see it brings out a little more detail. So if you like a little extra detail, you may want to use that. But then you might say it's a little too sharp, so you may want to pull your remove blur back just a little wee bit. Or maybe a lot. You know, somewhere around there looks pretty good. So we might be able to get away with that, but let's go back to auto. Let's try low resolution. Now, remember, these are low res images. This guy is 1920 by 1280, so very low JPEG. So that's low res. How does that look? That's pretty good. Let's check this ear out up here. Yeah, it's handling that really well. Let's try very compressed. Yeah, it's overkill. The eye looks really nice here, but that's overkill in the first. So... I would say it's a cross between low resolution, which looks pretty good, and Art and CG. Let me try Art and CG one more time. I do like Art and CG. It gives me that little extra sharpness. I know it's not a piece of art, but it still looks really good. Let's say we want to use that, but I think it's too sharp, so I'm going to pull the remove blur back a good bit here because I don't want to overdo it. And I think that looks really pretty good right there. Now, again, let's examine. So let's make sure we don't have any artifacts anywhere. Uh, look, I have artifacts. See, this is what I'm talking about. You see these artifacts right here? That would be a problem. If you didn't look around, you would say, hmm. It's trying to bring detail out of that area back there because it's out of focus. You see that? But I don't like it. I think it's not going to look right. Nope, I don't like it. 
So let's keep it right here and let's go to low resolution and see what happens. Yeah, and I think I think that's handling it a little bit better. Let's look over here. Let me try one more thing and let me go to standard. Okay, standard definitely. I don't have it on standard. You see what I mean about being a detective? Or you're going to say, man, this product sucks. I have artifacts, man. But no, you know what? You just picked the wrong model. So I think we're going to use standard. I'm going to go back to the cat. I'm going to hit auto. And yeah, you know, compare the image to left to the image and right. The image and right looks a lot better. Now, I like the cat better on art and CG. But you know what? I didn't like what it was doing to the background. It was giving me artifacts. And it was just handling the background all wrong, but I chose the wrong model. But you know what? I'm the guy in control here. You're the one in control when you're using these products and you got to experiment. You know, you got to take your time and get it right. Let's look in some other areas. Let's be real inspectors here. Yeah, I think I'm really good to go and I'm satisfied with that one. So now the cat is finished and we're ready to move on to the next image. So long, kitty. We're going to go on to a bigger cat. This time, we're going to work with a lion. By the way, everything you're seeing on the video is in real time. Nothing has been sped up, so you're seeing the actual times. Now, uh, also, the thing I wanted to point out is I'm upscaling these all two times. So I'm not really blowing them up super big, but I'm definitely blowing them up. For instance, this line is a very small uh, low-res JPEG, 1920 by 1280. It'll upsize to 3840 by 2560, which is, which is a nice substantial uh, increase in size. And at the end, I'll batch these all out, and you'll see how quick lightning fast this new gigapixel ai really is in fact let's turn this line up to six times and we'll compare it to the other two images which were only two times just to see what the uh, time difference is here but now notice how large my line is now that i've blown it up to 6x times it's a lot bigger see when i'm in 2x you see more of the cat but if i go to 6x it really blows it up i can uh, either come up here to zoom click here and change my zoom level or I could right click and zoom this down to 50%. That way I can see more of the line. Okay, there we go. But I'm definitely zoomed in more. And okay, that's, that's good. I think we're good. Let's go into this area, right here in the nose area. Now we're gonna start out, let's start out with the standard model. It takes a slightly longer time for the uh, previews to process because I'm upscaled to six times, but it's still super fast. But their standard looks pretty good. Let's come up to this ear right up here. Take a look at the ear. It's doing a nice job. Let's try lines. Again, there's a lot of lines in fur. I mean, fur are consist, fur consists of lines, right? And that that's, looks pretty good, actually. And let's come over to the eye, see if any weird artifacting happens. Yeah, I don't like what's happening around the nose area here. That looks funky. Don't like that. Again, be a detective. Let's go to Art and CG, see what it does. Oh, that looks pretty good. Let's come up to the ear. That looks nice. Let's come over to this tree here and see what it's doing to the tree. It's doing some... It doesn't look bad, but it's trying to uh, add texture to this tree here, which I think we might be able to get away with. That might look okay. Let's look at the fur here. The fur looks nice. Compare the fur on the left to the fur on the right. Looking really good. Um, let's come back over here. Let me see what happens if I take this remove blur and pull this back a good bit. Like so. Yeah, that looks more natural. Okay, cool. Now let's come up to the ear and see if we see yeah we still have a lot of detail there in the face yeah that looks good this area looks good let's go over here yeah pretty good and it is slightly softer so that looks real natural so yeah i think that's my winner so far now let's try low res Now, right now on my low res model, I'm, my auto is shut off. So let's turn it back on. Remember that remove blur was at nine. I'll try to remember that for the art and CG because I think I'm going to use that. So let's turn auto back on. Okay, so now let's take a look at the ear. Okay, not bad. Let's look over here. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's look over at this fur. Okay, that's not bad. Let's try very compressed. I highly re Oh, see. That's horrible, right? And, and if you use that, when you say, man, that looks really bad. Gigapixel sucks. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you know, 
You just have to get the right model. And we have choice. And I don't, it definitely don't like that. So that's not the right way. I'm going to go to Art and CG. The only thing I need to do is change this from low res. Or not, sorry. What am I saying, low res? Change this from remove blur from 60 down to a 9, if I recall right. So I'm going to go down to a 9, because I like the way it looks on this log back here, or tree that it's sitting on. And let's come up here one more time and look, make sure we're happy with everything. Look over here. Uh, it looks good. Background. No artifacts in the background. Again, be a detective. I'm doing a bang-up job, <laughs> wouldn't you agree? Oh boy, I have to pat myself on the back sometimes. All right, so we set up our three images for a successful upsizing. The first two are going to be 2x up conversions. The third one will be 6x up conversion. We have select all unchecked because we are applying different uh, models to these. The first one has low resolution, the second standard, and the third has art and CG. It's not a piece of art, but that's the one I thought worked the best, okay? And I have reduced color bleed off because I don't have any color bleed issues, and face refinement is off because I don't have a face here, although I do have a beautiful line face and a kitty face and a bird but not human all right so that's shut off and uh all we have to do now is click on save images and then we have this uh dialog box that comes up start batch processing but first a couple things we need to do image format i'm going to change these all to a uh, tiff format because maybe i want to work on these in photoshop or topaz studio 2 and i want to work with a higher resolution file 16 bit no compression. Uh, I'm going to leave the file name auto. It's going to append the uh, the uh, type of uh, uh, upscaling that it's used and the size and things. So I like that embedded on the file name. Okay, but you can rename it if you need to with a custom. And then color profile, preserve source profile. No, I'm going to up convert these to or or change them, not up converted, but change it to Pro Photo because it's a larger color workspace and I always work in Pro Photo. Adobe RGB is fine too, but I always work with Pro Photo. Okay, I'm going to save the directory back to the source. Now we're going to click start and let's see how long it takes to batch process these out. Off to the races, there it goes. There's our first image and it did it in a whopping five seconds. The second image which was a 2x up size, will be done at, let's see, 6 seconds. Now here's our largest one, 6x. So it's going to take maybe slightly longer. It won't show us the finishing time, but it'll be done here like right now. So it was pretty quick. I would say, you know, like three images in uh, under 30 seconds, pretty darn quick. Pretty impressive. It's never been that fast for me anyway. Now, it's going to vary from computer to computer depending what you have, you know, what kind of graphics process you have, you know, what your uh, processing chip is, and so on and so forth. And now for some pixel peeping. Uh, this is the bird image. This is the JPEG. And here he is up converted. Did a beautiful job. Got rid of that artifact that was over there. Super sharp, beautiful, upsized two times. And then here was our kitty cat. Here's the original. And here is the upsized version. And look at that background. Beautiful, super sharp, clear, wonderful job. And then lastly, our line. Here's the JPEG. And here is the gigapixel upsized. No artifacting, sharp, clear, beautiful job. So there it is, guys. Fur and feathers using Gigapixel AI. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please leave comments, questions. It helps me out. And when you share my videos, it helps my channel grow, and I appreciate that. So please like, share, subscribe. I really appreciate that. It helps me out. It helps my channel to grow. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.